Hello there, I'm Peter Gowers. And I'm Peter Kafkas. We're from our Property NT. Welcome and hello. Hello. Nice to see you. I hear you want to give the, the some tips out today. Well, yes, because we're constantly being asked for oh. information. Hmm. What should I do here? What should I do there? We talked about some buyer's tips uh, last week or the week before, whenever week it was. Yep, yep, yep. So I thought... Let's bang out some sellers' tips today. Oh, you sellers are in for a little treat today. Let's um, take it away, Gowers. Now, this is not to say that this is the be on end all and it's not exhaustive, but this is five tips that will really help you when it comes to selling your home. Beautiful. All right, so Beautiful. let's kick off with number one. Simple and obvious, but tidy up your garden and tidy up your house, inside and out. Make it presentable for everyone to instantly walk in and feel warm and welcome it's that first impression thing we talk yeah, about isn't it very much so in the in the wet season cut your grass in the dry season uh, water you, you water, water your grass exactly <laughs> make that brown grass look green before you decide to uh, have people come through thank you mr gowers for our wonderful sellers tidy up your garden and clear away any excess clutter first impressions count correct all right Tip number two. Number two, get, get out, out your toolbox. Sorry, I jumped on. No, that's there. okay. Yes, okay. get out the toolbox. No, <laughs> now, obviously, there's um all these little jo odd jobs lying around. The fan not working, the switch not uh, working or missing, uh, crack tile yep. and jump in. Uh, yes. And um, you know you can do them. Right? Yeah, so don't, don't get a handyman. I'm sick and tired of people in my family saying, oh, can you come around and put that cupboard door back on? Or can you do this or do that? Mm. Go and buy a $10 screwdriver kit from somewhere and go and figure it out. All right. All right, number three. Tip number three. <clears throat> this is a simple one. Again, straightforward. Now, I do have a bit of a personal note to make on this. Mm -hmm. Give your property a fresh paint of coat fresh paint of coat coat of paint yes fresh <laughs> give coat your, of paint give your property a paint this is why we don't read and listen use neutral tones neutral tones that orange feature wall that you did 10 years ago looks rubbish now right and, and the blue room and the green and bedroom. they're personal to you a buyer that comes in is not necessarily going to have the same taste as you so get it neutral and give the place a lick of paint. Give buyers the opportunity to visualize their own decor. Correct. Chances are they'll make the same wall orange anyway later on, but <laughs> <laughs> just give them a chance, man. Take it away. Tip number four. Now, this, this is a big one for mine. Depersonalize your space. That's a good one. Yeah, because like you might think that having the three fridges and the four coffee machines and the six turbo ninja <laughs> things that make your smoothie look great. But somebody might walk in and go, oh man, that uh, that kitchen, like that's really small. And it may not be small, no. but you just got too much stuff in there. In addition to that, we've all got the clean freak friend, right? When mm. you've decluttered, depersonalized and done all that stuff, Get them over for a yeah, look absolutely. and get their opinion because chances are there'll be more stuff that needs to go. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, a good one is also builders. Have you ever seen when they do like um, they build homes in a new suburb and they have the display village? Yes. Go into those houses and you'll notice that they're staged or sometimes you know, they're staged. They're always staged, really. Um, but they're totally depersonalized. Correct. And yeah. staging's another thing that for the right house or the right property, we do recommend. But we don't always recommend to it. To stage or not to stage? Okay, well, let's add a bonus one in there. Bonus. Yeah. Okay, so, to stage or not to stage, Mr. Gowers? So uh, I think it comes down to the value of the property. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, when, when you've got a, a more valuable or more expensive property, then you can sometimes get 20, 30, 40, 50,000 more uh, than you're anticipating because there may be competition. Yeah. That particular property's got certain appeal. Yep. So staging for four, five, six grand is is worthwhile. But if it's a 
$250,000 property. Sometimes just having it empty without your stuff in there is all yeah, it needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what you suggested, I thought it was great what you suggested um, to Adam as well. Sometimes you may have a huge home. Yeah. But as you said, just stage one of the bedrooms because a bedroom is a bedroom. You can stage one, they can see it done, and you don't have to stage the other two, which is quite smart, Correct. actually. Yeah. Partial staging can work really Partial well. Partial staging. This particular property had a massive entertainment, mm. balcony, outdoor area. Mm. And I thought staging was appropriate because somebody could walk out there as we did and go, oh, wow, this is massive. But you can't picture, you know, maybe where you put a portable bar, where you'd put outdoor couches yeah. or a yeah. day bed or whatever it might be. And so partial staging of that property, I thought was perfect. Brilliant. And if you really want to go to the extreme extreme, um, there is a such thing which you might have noticed where the actual house or room is empty but when you go online and look at the photos you have this wonderful furniture that's been uh, a virtu it's called virtual furniture right it's normally about $50 a photo give or take so it's not cheapest um, but there is that last final option as well mm. for you it, and it can be very effective it, it can cause confusion. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't it? <laughs> uh, um, where's all the um, stuff I saw in the pictures? Did somebody rob you? <laughs> anyway. uh, yeah, that's your bonus one for staging. And last but not least. This is a personal one to us, of course. But make sure you select yourself a great agent to sell your house. Absolutely. Now, a great agent. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that in itself is a list of about 50 things. But right. Let's keep this short for our wonderful audience. So, an agent who's interested in your pr in your place, firstly, because, you know, some one. agents walk in there and they're like, oh, yeah, I can sell this, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tick a box, here we go. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes it's that personal connection between the agent, you, and the property, yeah. which gets them interested and gets them into the process of selling. Yeah. Agents that use the most up-to-date and modern marketing techniques, because mm. mm. if your place isn't marketed, no one's buying it. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes, and you've got to be really, well, not sometimes, actually a lot of the time, be careful what you're quoted on a selling price. Make sure there's evidence to go with the price that you're being quoted, because yep. there's nothing worse as an agent than when you're dealing with someone who's selling their property and they say, oh, well, I spoke to so-and-so and they told me they could get 50000 more than you're quoting. Yeah, well, you know what? Go with that agent because yeah. you can probably get $50,000 more. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> as long as there's evidence to support oh. the price that you're quoting. Yeah. And remember too, we do sometimes in certain markets, mm. we do get above the asking mm. price mm. when we sell a property. We don't do that by over-quoting it in the first place. So how do you find a good real estate agent? Do this on them. Next time they pop over and do a presentation and say that they've done all these wonderful things, say, I want you to show me the last five sales and what you've achieved for them as per suburb uh, average. And then you'll find out if they're giving them away at auction or not. Mm. And you can <laughs> you can look at the steady, sometimes rapid decline of the asking price. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm. So Thanks, anyway, guys. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. There's five tips plus a bonus on uh, what you can do if you're looking to sell your home. Any other tips, contact us through the socials or how you yeah. normally find us. Actually, comment below if, if there's something you want us to talk about, whether it's, we've spoken about advertising, how much you should be paying. Peter Gowers has spoken on contract um, tips. Um, I don't know, maybe you want us to do a video on how much commission I should be paying or whatever. Let us know. Drop a comment below. Oop. Or you might have sold a property and there's a tip we didn't mention that you thought helped you to sell your place. By yeah. all means, tell us. Let us know. We'll do a video on it and we'll interview you as well. <laughs> I'm Peter Gowers. I'm Peter Kafkas. We're from My Property Antique. We'll catch you next time.